Hi, welcome to Gondra Center again. So today I wanted to talk to you guys about IVF or in vitro fertilization. Kind of give you a little uh, picture of how this works. And many people are, are scared of going to fertility practices because they think that the only thing they're gonna receive is in vitro fertilization, and that's not true. Uh, some people will need to ovulate and be sexually active. Some people need inseminations, but some people need IVF. Who needs IVF or in vitro fertilization? Well, those are the patients who have issues with their tubes are blocked, who um, have a, a male partner with a very low sperm count and doesn't, a, it's not enough to do inseminations. Um, other indications is when patients have uh, tried uh, everything else and nothing else works. So we feel like we need to move to a more invasive um, approach. And um, sometimes we have to do this because patients have genetic conditions and they want to be sure that they don't have a baby with the same genetic condition. So we have to do IVF in order to test those babies to be sure that we don't transfer him back when embryo that has, is, is gonna be sick. Anyways, when we decide to do IVF, which is not for everybody, but who is really indicated, uh, what we need to do first is, um, most of the time, we put patients on uh, birth control pills for about two to four weeks, uh, sometimes six. Um, and then the reason that we do that is because we want to suppress those ovaries, because we want the, all the follicles that are sleeping in there to grow at the same time. Every month we have few that, or several that wake up, but there is one that wins. We don't want one winner here, we want all. So we put patients on birth control pills, suppress their ovaries, and we, when the time comes, we start with the medication, and that medication is FSH hormone. FSH is a follicle stimulant hormone. It's a hormone made by your, own, by your brain to stimulate the follic follicular growth. So it's a follicle stimulant hormone. So your body produces some of that and makes you grow an egg a month. We're gonna, when we do IVF, we give you way more than that so they can grow everybody at the same time. So you do about um, between nine and 12 days of shots, depending how long it takes you to get ready. You can form um, uh, ultrasounds where we monitor how uh, how your follicles are growing, the follicles of where the egg are, the egg leaves. And uh, we do ultrasound, uh, also blood tests to be sure your progesterone and your estrogen levels are in a good place. You come for about four or five ultrasounds, and then when you are ready, we want your ovaries to look like this. You have a lot of eggs. I always tell my patients, I want your ovaries to look like beehives. But that means there's gonna be a lot of a lot of eggs growing, so we have a better chance of success if we have more eggs to, to harvest. So how do we harvest those eggs? When you're ready, we give you a medication to initiate the ovulation, uh, because that's what uh, and finishes the maturation of the eggs. But we harvest them before you drop them. How do we do that? Everything has to be very, very lined up with a specific timing, and then we know we're able to find those eggs mature, mostly without you know, before you drop them. So we do that under IV sedation. It's a twilight. Uh, we have anesthesia coming and give you a little IV and it gives you medication on your IV, but you're breathing on your own, taking some oxygen. And then we go through the vagina with the vaginal probe, but this time it's gonna be, have attached a needle. And that's how I go and um, drain each one of those follicles that they have the follicular fluid and the egg swimming inside. I drain every single, single follicle from both ovaries and I give them to the embryologist. While I'm doing this, your husband, I says who sperm we are using, um, give us a sample of the sperm and the embryologist then also looks at afterwards how many eggs of the ones I got were mature and those mature eggs are gonna be injected by the sperm. That's called ICSI, intracytoplasmatic sperm injection. The next day, we see how many embryos fertilize, which is the process of um, starting making the baby. And from there, we wait up to day five or six to see how many develop to blastocytes. If you're a candidate for a fresh embryo transfer, we do this uh, five days after the retrieval, we put the embryo back on you. And how do we do that? We go with a little cannula, with a little catheter inside your, your uterus, at this time, you're gonna be looking in your tummy with uh, the abdominal probes, so you're gonna have a full bladder, and I'm gonna go and inject the embryo, or embryos, depending on your age and what we decide, 
back into the uterus and the ultrasound guidance. That's not painful, you're awake, and your husband is there with you. If we decide that you're not a candidate to the fresh transfer because your estrogen levels are too high or you have polycystic ovarian syndrome, we are doing genetic testing, we freeze the embryos and then we do the embryo transfer the month after. In that case, we have to give you different hormones to get your lining ready and then we wake up the embryo and that's what we do. When we get the amount of eggs, we get a certain amount of eggs. And not all those eggs are gonna be mature. We do our very best to get them more mature, but body is body, everybody is different. And we follow standards, who, how big your follicles have to be in order to expect them to be mature. Some people follow those standards, some people don't. We don't know if it's your first IVF cycle, how big your follicles have to be in order to be mature, but across the board has to be about 14 millimeters or more, we consider they should be mature, but sometimes it's more than that. We get all those eggs and the mature ones, they're gonna be a little less. Then from those mature ones that are injected, the fertilization across the board is about 70%. Sometimes it's 40, sometimes it's 100. So then the process shrinks down the pathway. Then from those that they made it to fertilization, not all are gonna make it to blastocyte. Some do, some don't. And only the blastocytes are the ones who are being transferred and we are being cryopreserved. Those embryos can be cryopreserved for many, many years to come. And then you can have children later on if you get pregnant the first time where your blastocytes that are already have been frozen. So this is how it's supposed to look a blastocyte. So I hope that um, helps you to understand better what IBF is. Uh, there is much more, of course, to it. But I just kind of wanted to give you a little general idea to know where to start. Okay, thank you.